Hello. Today I'm going to tell you about an app that I use um, in my World Geography classroom uh, and I'm going to show you how I use it. Um, the app that I'm going to talk about today is called Book Creator. It's two separate words so if you'll click on the App Store app and you'll search Book Creator, again two separate words, um, then you'll find this. A lot of times when you search apps they come up as one word, crazy, this one's actually two. When you find it you'll see that there's two different ones, free version and a paid version. Let's go with the free version first. That'll let you know if you actually like it or not and everything that we're going to do today in this tutorial you can do on the free version. So if you like it you can buy the, the paid version um, or you can just stick with the free version. It's going to come to this screen and it's going to want you to watch their tutorial. You can do that but let's go with mine first. Mine's a little more simple and it will show you exactly what I use in the classroom. Bottom uh, left, if you'll click on the plus arrow, the plus arrow will give you three options. Um, it's going to give you the option of creating a new book, importing a book, duplicating a book. Um, the importing a book, if you already have one saved on your iTunes, this will allow you to bring it back into the editor mode. Or you could duplicate a book that you already have if you're wanting to create a new one. Um, if you're wanting to add to that book, I'm sorry. But for us today, let's just create a new book. You click create a new book, it's going to give you three different options. These are the three different dimensions of the video of what it's going to be filmed in or the book as it's going to be filmed. I always use landscape. Landscape seems to work a whole lot better on mobile devices so let's go with landscape today. Now once you have it in the right dimensions that you want you've got a blank screen. Perfect. Creativity can run wild at this point. Um, now I'm going to show you what this uh, app actually does. If you'll click on the plus arrow um, the plus arrow is going to give you the different options that are available. Uh, you'll see the ones that actually pop up. Uh, you've got camera, you're going to have a pen, uh, you're going to be able to upload video if you want, you can import sound if you want, um, or you can just upload photos. Um, for me the first thing that I'm going to look at is the photos. So if you'll click on photos, uh, I already went to Google and saved the images that I'm going to use so just to save you a little bit of time. Um, that's what you need to do. Just save them to your camera roll and then you can import them from there. So go to photos and you'll select the picture that you want. Once you select the picture that you want, you can put it in the, in the uh, book the way that you want to. You could change the orientation with your fingers. Um, you could change the orientation by dragging it, flipping it. If you'll grab the corners, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, however it is that you want it. But then you could place that image where you want it to be. Next, you can add text. So go back up to the plus arrow and click on it. Um, once you click on the plus arrow, you can click on the text icon and you could type whatever text that you want in there at that point. Um, for my book, you're going to see what I'm going to be putting in here and then you'll get to see the book that I've created once it's kind of all over to give you an idea of what it'll look like. Um, but you could type the text in how you want. Once you get the uh, text typed in, Go ahead and click done in the top right corner and then it's going to bring you back to the home screen. Now to, for me when I first started using this app I was very frustrated because I could not change the size of the font. It was all the same size um, and then I even implemented this, pro, uh, this app into a project in the classroom and when the kids started playing with it they're like hey Mr. Hill if you'll just click this little I button in the top right corner you'll see it there. You click it and you can drag the scroll bar, you can make it bigger, you could change the color, you could change it to make it bold, you can make it italics, you can make it do a lot of different things. Showing my ignorance a little bit, the kids kind of taught me that, but we'll just imagine as if I figured that out on my own. Um, but that makes it uh, a lot better and you can see that you could change the color however it is that you want to. Now I've skipped through me actually creating my book, I'll show you that um, book in just a second, but I've skipped through to kind of show you how to end this. Once you're finished and you have everything ready the way you want it to, if you'll go in the top left corner and click My Books, it's going to back you out of this book. Don't worry, it'll save what you've got. That's what's nice about this, but it's going to back you out. In the bottom right, well, let's go in the middle first. In the bottom middle um, of this image, of this screen, you'll see uh, another info button. This is where you're able to change the title. You can change some of the credits and you can see where I've changed the title of my book and some of the credits. Where this is going to come in handy is if you actually publish it to iTunes so you can go back and watch it later. Once you've got that set the way you want it to, 
If you'll go in the bottom right corner, that share button is going to allow you to share it in various ways. The first is going to ask you to export it as an EPUB. If you're wanting this to go into iTunes and go into the iBook app, which I recommend because the students, um, they're going to brag about it at home and show mom and dad, hey, look what I did. Um, you could save it there, you could save it, and then it'll upload it into your iTunes, and you can go from there. For today, what I'm going to show you, the middle feature is save it as a PDF. If you're wanting a hard copy of these books to where you can print them or to be able to email them, that's what you want to do there, and then you can just email it to yourself. But again, from earlier, if you have a recording in there, obviously the PDF is not the way to go. Last one is export as a video. This is what I do in my class because I like to then go and put it on YouTube, and then we'll go and watch it later. But you export it as a video, click on that. Then the bottom left, you'll go to Save to Camera Roll. Once you've got it there, it's going to take it a while based on how many slides you've got, and it's going to export it all the way to the camera roll. Um, and then once it's there, you can go from that point to YouTube. Now, if you have any other questions, just let me know. But this is kind of how I use this. And what I like to do is, personally, I just like to take off and, and try everything out on my own. So that's what I'm going to let you do. But before you do that, I'm going to let you watch the book that I put together um, for the tutorial for this video. Don't worry, it's copyrighted. If you, want a, if you want an autographed copy, I can get that to you. But set back, get you some popcorn, and enjoy the book that I just created. This is a story of Khalifa Nayan. Khalifa Nayan is the president of the United Arab Emirates, also known as UAE. The United Arab Emirates is found in the greater Middle East, and you can see it highlighted in green on this image here. Politics in the UAE takes place in a framework of a federal, presidential, absolute monarchy. The United Arab Emirates is a federation of seven constituent monarchies. The Emirates of Abu Dhabi, Ajman, Dubai, Fahara, Ras al Kamai, Sharha, and Um al Kaiwan. According to the convention, the ruler of Abu Dhabi is the president of the United Arab Emirates, the head of state, and the ruler of Dubai is the prime minister of the United Arab Emirates, the head of the government. And again, we learned that Khalifa Nayan is actually the president of the United Arab Emirates, meaning he's leading all seven of these emirates. The population of the United Arab Emirates in the year 2015 is 9,577,000 people. Now, the population pyramid, as you can see in the bottom left, looks a little different. The reason the population pyramid looks a little bit different is you have a lot of guest workers coming in and working the oil fields. These workers are in the worker age around their years 20 years old to 45 years old, and they're mainly males. These males coming into work mainly are single. They do not have a family, or if they do have a family, they are not bringing their family with them. So the population pyramid of the United Arab Emirates looks a little bit different because of the natural resource of oil. The UAE's HDI puts them at number 40 in the world. The Human Development Index number in 2013 was 0.827. The life expectancy at birth was 76.8. The mean years of schooling was 9.1, while the expected years of schooling was 13.3. The gross national income was $58,068. As I brought up earlier, oil is what makes this region so wealthy. This map shows you where the oil fields are located and where the gas fields are located, and it's mainly in that western region. But you can see that there's a lot of areas in this area that contains the natural resource of oil. All of these factors combined together makes my country a more developed region. 
We are democratic. We have oil. Our HDI puts us in the top 50 in the world. Our gross national income is one of the highest in the world. We have a lot of male workers, and our economy is doing very well. Our country is on the rise. I hope you would come visit.